Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training for HCIE. Today topic we are going to discuss on MPLS VPN. Let's start our part 3. So the next one will be on the MPLS VPN running on the RIP. Instead of I do it the 2CE1 as a and CE2 is RIP, I do it one side as a RIP, on the other side I do it as a ISIS. Okay. So when CE1 is running on RIP, the other side is running on the ISIS. So in the ISP over here I'm running as a OSPF MPLS as well as a BGP and also the MPBGP. So this will be the same. So I use back the same topology that just now we go through. But I reset the configuration already. So now over here on the CE1 as a RIP version 2 and the other side as a ISIS. So under ISIS, as we know that ISIS we need to have a network entity. So I said that it's an area of 49001. Alright. So let's come back to here. So now we're going to start to configure on the CE, PE1, P, C, PE2 and the CE2. Firstly, the PE1, P and PE2, no changes. All the MPLS is already defined. Just to double check on the display MPLS, LSP. So the LSP is still there. So what we need to perform is just to configure the route between the CE and the PE. So let's have a look. So let me go into the interface, interface G000 to display this. So it's already binding to the VPN1. So the next step I need to do it over here. It means that I need to configure IP between CE1 and PE1. First, I configure on the CE1 first to enable the IP. So IP version 2 undo summary and I will dice the network 11000 and also 10000. So, sorry. I will dash the network 10.0.0.0 So I will dash the 11 and the 10.0.0 into the IP. So that's it for the CE1. For PE1, I need to configure the IP as well. But this time when I define IP1 with the process ID and the VPN instant VPN1. I need, I need to put this IP inside the VPN instant VPN1 and as a version 2 undo summary as well as the network 10 0 0 0 all right so in this case I just have to make sure display routing tables VPN instant VPN 1 I will see that the 11 11 11 learn from IP routing protocol it's just to double confirm on the VPN instant VPN 1 to 11, 11, 11, 11, I can ping through. Okay, so everything looks fine. So I configure on the CE2 using the ISIS. ISIS network entity 49001000000001, let's say. Okay, it's already enabled. So I go into the interface G000, ISIS enable, interface loopback 0, ISIS enables. So that's it for the customer side. And for the PE, I need to define the ISIS to enable ISIS using the VPN instant. So ISIS1, VPN instant, VPN1, and define the network entity. 49001.000.000.0002.00 Then I go into the interface ISIS enables So to make sure that I receive the ISIS route Display IP routing tables VPN instant VPN1 So you will see that uh, the 2222 is not here yet It's not here yet. 
Alright, right now you can see that the 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 I've learned from ISIS. Okay, so right now PE1, PE2, they learn their route information. And now I just have to make sure that on the PE1, check on the BGP, VPN V4, VPN Instant, VPN1, routing tables. I have nothing here. I haven't performed any import route from the CE into the PE yet. So I need to go to the BGP100. I import my IP route into the PE1. So I need to go to the IPv4 family, VPN Instant, VPN1, import route IP. Sorry, import route IP1. And I'm going to display the BGP VPN route again. So you see that the route is being imported. Okay, so PE2 should receive this as already. Display BGP VPN V4, VPN Instant, VPN 1, routing table. I should receive already. And the PE2 need to import the route into the BGP as well. So I go to the BGP 100. IPv4 family, VPN instant, VPN1, import route, ISIS1. And now, the route information, you should have more. So 11 and 22. PE1 and PE2 should receive the same information. But now, the customer is still not receiving yet. Just between the PE, I exchanging the route only. So it means that from the PE1, in the RIP, I need to perform the import route BGP. Import the BGP route back to the customers. Same to the PE2 as well. I need to go to the ISIS and import route BGP. And now you will see that on the CE1, when I display IP routing tables, you see that they have learned that 2222222 learn from RIP. And I can easily go to 22, 22, 22, 22. No problem at all. From VPN 1, site 1 to VPN 1, site 2, look back 0. So these are the two examples between the RIP version 2 and the ISIS. So after this, come back, we will cover it based on the OSBF on one side and the other side will be on the BGP. So later on, that we're going to cover over here. One side is a OSBF and the other side as in BGP 200. So I'm going to form this in a short while. So before that, let's have a look on the configuration. This is based on, on the RIP configuration. Okay, so on the RIP configuration, next. Over here, you see that for the configuration, same things. This one, we just now, we, we just remain all the information. What we perform here, we are configured based on the IP information and the import route IP. Okay, import the IP into the BGP and import the BGP back to the IP. Same to the ISIS as well. ISIS, the configuration over here, so they are performing over here. Import route ISIS and also on the ISIS itself, I'm going to import route. A BGP but over here they're using just as a level 1 but for myself I am using level 1 and the level 2 so next one you're going to cover is based on the OSBF alright so let's be on the OSBF based on the OSBF we need to define this one as a OSBF and this one is a, as a BGP OSBF, BGP, and the MPLS. So it will all be the same, just right now on the customer side, they're using a different routing protocol. One side is using OSBF, the other side using the 
BGP. So this is a BGP 200 and this is a BGP 100. So they use back the same VPN instant or you are using the same just changing the customer routing protocol. So let me show you that how we're going to configure it. One side using OSBF, the other side uh, using the BGP 200 AS. So for the CE1 over here, I need to define the OSBF. Let's say it's under area 0. I advertise the network 11 11 11 11 0 0 0 and network 10 12.1.0 All right, this is on the CE1. So on the PE1, because you need to be aware, you have to check right now you should have two, you have one OSBF as your IGP already. So now when I configure the OSBF that facing to the customer, I need to assign the second process ID, another process ID, followed by the VPN instant, VPN1, and the area 0, and network 10.12.1.0, and 000255. All right, you see that right now, the state is up to the full state. So it means that we have display IP routing, VPN instant, VPN 1, I should see that 11, 11 learn from OSBF. So on the other side, I configure on the CE2 using the BGP, BGP 200. I doing the peer, peer using the physical IP addresses. So peer 10, 12, 2.2, 2 .2, AS number 100. And I advertise 22, 22, 22, 22, 32. I advertise the 22 network into it. So that's it for the CE2. For the PE2, I need to go into the BGP100. IPv4 family VPN instant VPN1 and peer the customer from here. So I'm going to do the peering 10.12.2.1 AS numbers 100. All right, just wait for a while to make sure that the route information, the BGP peering is coming up. All right, so over here I make some mistake. So IPv4 Sorry, it's a BGP 100, IPv4 family, VPN instant, VPN 1. The peer, let me undo this, undo peer 10.12.2.1. The peer 10.12.2.1, it should be AS200, it's not the AS100. So just let wait for a while, another 20 seconds. All right, you see that right now the peer is open conform and and I display BGP VPN V4 VPN instant VPN1 routing tables I learned how to go to 222222 So now I need to import route between the PE1 and the PE2 that can learn the route each other, from each other So I need to go into the BGP 100 from the PE1, IPv4 family, VPN instant, VPN1, import route OSBF2, make sure over here you put as OSBF2, not the OSBF1. And have a look on the PE2, where I display BGP route, I should learn this as well. But in this case, over here under the BGP 100, IPv4 family, VPN instant, VPN1, I need to import route direct as well to make sure that I can learn both of the route information. Let's check again. So now this is a more proper. I need to import the 10.12.2.2 into the BGP to allow the CE1 can reach to the CE2. So after I imported, I need to go to the PE1, back to the OSBF, OSBF2, 
OSBF2 import route DGP and to make sure that CE1 can reach to the CE2 let's check display IP route so you see that I know how to go to 22 22 and 11 11 11 so let me ping again to 22 22 this time it's able to ping across from the CE1 to the CE2 alright that's not too difficult on the configuration always make sure that IGP has been formed within the ISP next basic MPLS third your VRF connection fourth your MP BGP between the PE1 and the PE2 then the next one is just a route learned from the customers and exchange between the two PE and the route send back to the customers so this is the all the six steps you need to be aware when you configure MPLS VPN alright so no, it's not too, too difficult on the OSPF configuration so OSPF configuration just need to make sure that when you build your OSPF you need to put a OSPF2 a new process ID import OSPF2 and import the BGP and for the BGP itself is even simple so make sure that you are import direct from the under the VPN instance do the peering so over here that just use a subsidized ASS so on the other side you just do a normal peering that's it so that's all for the all the configuration so the next one we look at will be on the troubleshooting so based on the troubleshooting they can be based on the control plane fault or the data plane fault. Check whether there are reachable route between the CE devices. So you need to check either the CE able to reachable or not. Check whether the CE device advertised route to the PE and whether there are reachable route between the CE and PE. So make sure that the VRF, make sure when you do a ping, has to be minus VPN instant okay to check whether the reachability between the PE and CE and check whether the PE device advertise route to each other so this one is related to the MP BGP you need to import route to a BGP check whether an MPI BGP neighbor relationship is established between the PE equipment okay this also very important the IP BGP and check whether LSP established this is on the basic MPLS check whether the MPLS and LTP configuration are correct make sure all the LSP are formed correctly and let's say on the data plane is 40 then you need to check the proper MTU has been set or not then the last one is a uh, exam preparation Based on exam preparation, we always want to practice the MPLS VPN command. Not only that, you need to also cover the a basic MPLS as well as a static LSP. So understand the MPLS VPN principle and the applications. So you need to know very well how the MPLS VPN was the principle and the applications that bring to us so as in VPN they can have a L2 and the L3 but over here we will cover what we need on the L3 VPN familiar with the routing protocol running between the CE and PE so this can be every single protocol like the static static route IP ISIS OSBF and even those a BGP so you need to familiar with all the routing protocol that just now I showed and go through the headaches it's very important for the headaches okay go to the headaches so I think it be that's all for the MPLS VPN topic thank you all of you thanks for watching please do not forget to subscribe to our channel